Hello everyone, my name's Dave, and this is the first devlog video for a relaxing minimalist alien farm game that I'm working on. You'll be able to clear the landscape, plant alien crops and trees, tame strange creatures, construct intricate paths and clear the land for waterways to create a thriving farm, journey to the local village with your harvest, and trade for better tools, seeds, and creatures. Discover diverse biomes full of new and fascinating plants, trees, and alien creatures. Who knows what unknown wonders await you. As always, I'll be creating the game 100% from scratch with my own engine using C++ and SDL2. All the footage I've made so far is just a prototype at this point. As you can see, the units move and then stop. I did make a quick and very simple program that animates their movement. All it consists of is a background image and a few images for the units and some basic code that allows me to set where they should move or rotate to. So for example, I'll just add some units here. I can then run it and you can see that the units move and then stop after a few seconds. I know it's not the most impressive, however, it was designed to show a preview of the idea and was very quick to make. Given that, I think it turned out pretty well. The first thing I'm going to do is get the basic engine set up and draw the purple checkered grid. Since I already have similar code in other projects, I decided to copy some basic code that creates a window and the grid. The grid is drawn by two nested for loops that loop over the window select either dark or light purple depending on the X and Y position of the tile, and then draw it to the screen. <laughs> While getting the basic colors on the screen is a great start, obviously the game will need more complexity than that. So I decided to think about what kind of information each tile will need to contain. While the game is a top-down 2D world, each tile could have colored grass, for example the purple that I've shown so far, grass removed to reveal the brown dirt to grow crops, water, and of course a plant or animal on top. Therefore, the world can be thought of as having multiple layers at different heights. Let's just think of the tile and ignore the plants and animals for now. For the tile, the lowest depth would allow water above it, but may not necessarily always contain water. The next highest would be dirt without grass, and finally, the grass. This means that there will need to be a way to determine what layer each tile is at, whether it contains water or not, and the color of the grass on top. While I'm sure there are many ways to do this, depending on the desired functionality, for now I'm just going to set up an enumeration that will have all the different possible states. Empty means it's at the lowest depth, with no water, Water means it's at the lowest depth with water. Dirt is dirt without any grass. And finally, grass purple is for purple grass. Of course, later I can add grass green, grass blue, etc. This is a great start, but I'm sure I'll add more slash make some more changes later as development progresses. One thing you'll notice with this method is that it only stores the grass color information if the tile is grass. This means that if the grass is removed, there's no way to know what the color was before. Therefore, if it were to be turned back into grass at a later time, the color would need to be taken from the grass around it, which could be thought of as the surrounding grass growing on top. Another way it could be set is by placing grass on top by the player of any desired color, or alternatively, the color information could be stored as a separate enumeration so that it's not lost and can be reverted to its original color. I'm going to draw a few images that can be used as placeholders for the tile images. The first is for empty dirt. It will have a large shadow to show its depth, and of course I'll draw both a dark and light brown one. Next water will be blue and have a smaller shadow. Finally, for the dirt that can be planted on, I've created a small shadow, and of course both a dark and light brown one. No image is needed for the purple one, as it will be drawn as a colored rectangle in the code. I decided to modify the draw function to draw the purple grass color as a default background for now, and then the tile on top of it. For the tile, 
the texture is selected based on the type and whether the tile is supposed to be drawn dark or not. For now, I'm just using a simple switch case statement. However, in the future, the code could get a bit long, so it could always be upgraded, for example, by using an array or a hash table. I also set some of the tiles to be the different tile types. When the game is run, uh, that doesn't look right. Oh, oops, the default tile type is empty dirt, but it should really be purple grass. Okay, that's much better now. It's a bit weird at the moment because adjacent tile shadows are supposed to only follow the outline and not be in between. However, right now I just want to get the basic tile system set up. I think this is a good place to stop for this video, and I will start working on that in the next one. Let me know what you think of this game idea in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.